Welcome back. This is the Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Now, over the weekend, the Future Awards Africa announced their nominees. Um, and the Tea Time crew is definitely proud of all the young people making the country and indeed Africa proud. The Future Awards celebrates young people between the ages of 18 and 31 who have made outstanding achievements in the year under consideration. Nominated in different categories are amazing young personalities like Mr. Macaroni, Taoma, Dim Maume, Winifred of Delicious Food, um, founder of Mental Aware Nigeria Victor Ogo, Akomola Fehen which Bankole, Barbara of Oven Secrets, Ebele Molua, a girl who's always been on the show, FK Abudru, Fireboy, Rema, J, um, DJ Copy, Omale. I can go on and on, but our very own Anita Felix was nominated yep. for the Future Awards um, Africa Prize for Journalism. According to the FAA website, she uses images, videos, and tests to report and investigate diverse human interest stories in Africa and has covered thorny issues like alleged police brutality, sexual abuse, and surviving Boko Haram. And she's joining us live on Tea Time to have this conversation. <laughs> Congratulations, darling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elsie. No, no, Thanks people get my drum roll. They are very, very important. Thank you there so are some much. that just feel like you saw them. Mm. Did them. How I'm do joking. you feel? Everybody's equal on the show. First of all, it feels amazing reading out, you know, what you just read. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know where you got that from. Okay. But it just sounded incredible to hear, you know, from someone else's mouth. Just, mm -hmm. you know, reading out all the things you've been able to achieve mm -hmm. in such a short time. So I feel, I feel grateful. I so, first felt it was a scam when I got the mail yesterday. I was like, these guys okay. are trying to scam me. Because mm -hmm. I didn't apply for anything yeah. at the Future Award. Mm -hmm. But now I know it's real and it's amazing. So how do you think this is going to motivate a lot of young people? Like you said, you thought it was a scam. You never expected it. Right? Exactly, you never <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah, so how do you think this helps to motivate a lot of people and keep them going? Like, what message would you pass to a lot of young people out there? See, the message I'll pass is read. Why I say read is because lots of... You know, when it comes to about life and decisions I've taken about my life and my career, mm -hmm. it's because of reading. Nobody actually sat me down to give me this and this advice. Mm -hmm. Because I read books that had practical work sessions on, say, what do you want to achieve? This is that. This is how to write a mission statement. Because I, you know, read and I got all this information. Mm -hmm. I was able to say, I was able to do that homework, search in words and say, this is what I want to achieve. And then on my way to doing everything I set out to achieve, mm -hmm. the accolades and all of that is coming. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So just... Figure out what you want to do. Write out your mission statement. It's very important. Hold it very dear to your heart. And along the way, you find people recognizing you and giving you a thumbs up. Mm. Right. So what inspires the kind of story you follow? It's just one word. People. Mm. People and the life they live. Um, to borrow the popular book of popular Kenyan you know, journalist, uh, uh, Konangi, yes. He said that uh, journalism basically is like having a front row seat to history. And it's just amazing that I have the privilege to see life as it unfolds and write about it, document it, do videos, and show people for posterity's sake that this is how mm -hmm. it was in 2020. Mm -hmm. And people would, you know, live, you know, years to come and see just how life was at that time. All right. You know, so especially Human Angu story. Mm -hmm. There was a story I did last year in collaboration with the Africa Center for International Law and Accountability, ASILA in Ghana. You know, we had to investigate the alleged massacre of several Nigerians and West African migrants in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Stories like that. Working on a documentary right now about, you know, a guy, a bus driver who was allegedly killed by tax force officials last year. Mm. So stories like that, stories of, you know, corrupt public officials, stories of Boko Haram insurgency, traveled all the way to Adama, Northeast Nigeria, coming back to Lagos to tell the stories, to see how much has changed since 2009. Mm. Do you understand? So stories about, so people, it's about people inspire people. me. Right. Yes. So I like the fact that you started with a quote of, um, it's like journalism is having a front row seat to history, right? Yes. And, um, you know, in these days when you hear journalism, you know, the bloggers call themselves journalists. You see a a lot of mediocres, you see charlatans and a lot of people that do not even belong in a profession and then it's losing its professionalism to, basically and uh, when people see it, they just look at it like oh these people just they're just clouds people they're looking for stories now um, what's your take on this and how can do you think we can revamp the journalism industry to be as professional and as reputable as it should be okay so two points to answer your question first one the world is changing the world is evolving User-generated content is so powerful right now. I mean, somebody just being able to bring out their phone and capture events. I remember you talked about the lady who captured the killing of George Floyd. Mm. If she wasn't there, we wouldn't have that massive protest in mm. the US that is causing a social political change mm. right now. And I am a journalist, but 
on Easter, midnight of Easter, something was happening, lockdown robberies all around the country. People were setting up bonfires to protect their, their homes mm. from, you know, the same mm. robbers were going mm. out to attack people because of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. I wasn't with my camera. I don't even own a camera. But I was able to bring up my phone, took the risk to come out of my house at midnight. And I took that video. It, it went viral. People from Al Jazeera, the BBC, called me to collaborate on stories. So it's important for people, right, to actually bring out their phone and take, you know, record what's happening. It's good because we as journalists, we can now use those footage they've gathered to help us in our storytelling. Mm. But the issue right here is when people actually fabricate fabricate stories and try to exactly try to peddle fake news. That's where the issue is. And I think fake news is is a vice or a challenge in the media mm -hmm. that would be with us for a very long time. Speaking mm. of fake news, do you think the NSARS was uh, manipulated by fake news in any way? Actually, there were quite a number of fake news. Mm -hmm. And I did see uh, amazing journalists of mine from newspapers like The Cable come out to debunk such stories, as well as Africa Check. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, the fake news about, uh, you know, if you protest for about 180 days, the United Nations will interfere. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. so, fake mm -hmm. news like that. So, yes, but the, the essence, the soul of the protest still was alive and true that there is police brutality in Nigeria and that it needs to stop. Finally, before I let you go, if there's one thing, I mean, your journey, your, I, would, I would love to say you're just beginning, actually. Yes, indeed. So in this journey, if there's one thing you would love to change in this profession, what would it be? At the Media Foundation for West Africa conference in Ghana last year, I you know, proposed this solution to some of my colleagues there. Mm -hmm. And I told them that I feel that the reporting in Africa has been too negative for too long. Mm -hmm. And if you look around, there's actually so much great things. Young yeah, Africans, yeah. young Nigerians yeah. inventing stuff. Yeah. Do you understand? Young enterprising Nigerians breaking bars and creating yeah. employment. Look at Paystack. I interviewed Shola and uh, you know his, his uh, co-founder Ezra doing amazing stuff. Yeah. But you hardly find the foreign media coming to interview or put a light on those things. So the onus is on us as African journalists to look out for those story. positives and tell the stories because the essence is to bring balance to the table. Thank you, Aneta, for drinking tea with us. And I, I really hope you bring this one home. Amen. Bring it on, girl. Amen. I it's want to put it on this table. It's time for another quick break. And when we come back, we have more stories to discuss.